Yeah, we have got something weird. I've got a bit of a vibration at the moment. Fly like this, she's wobbling all over the place. Can you see it from there? I'll try and make drop the scene. See, that's yeah, that's fairly normal. That's negligible, but if you listen, she's popping and banging. Okay, we'll shut that down. My name is Tim Palmer, I fly a Jodel DR1050 out of this farm strip in East Anglia. I have to say I'm very disappointed that I didn't film any of this but last Saturday I went back over John was keen to try and sort out the problem he'd been thinking about it and although the weather conditions weren't good it was a very very strong gusty wind we decided that we would start by taking all the plugs out again Most of them were absolutely fine apart from one pair that were quite heavily oiled up. So we cleaned them all, we connected them up again and we checked the firing order and we checked the quality of spark in each. It could have been any number of things but we did wonder if a little too much oil had got into the cylinders when we oiled the rags to bung up the holes while we waited for the plug washer gaskets to arrive. Leaving the cows off, we pushed it out. It all happened very quickly. I wasn't expecting to go out in the wind. It really picked up and was gusting quite a lot. But in hindsight, it was a good job that we did because it did fire up straight away, which was really good. Um, spluttered a little bit. John had told me to very slowly but steadily increase the power. There were a few pops and bangs so I leaned the mixture a bit and then a little bit more. For a few seconds I could feel everything settling back into place. It was a real shame that I didn't film it but more importantly we needed to get it sorted out. I can only usually manage about 
2000 RPM against the brakes before it starts to roll forward. So two of them bravely hung on to the tail while I managed to increase the power to give me something like 2350 I believe. I left it running like that for a couple of minutes and then I waved them away and I had a quick taxi around remembering to pull forward when I was taxiing with the wind behind me. The wind has been known to lift up the tail of some Jodels and in some cases nose them over. So that's something that I always remember. There was a time when we were taxiing out from Calais. I got John behind me and uh, a little voice on the radio said, don't forget to pull forward, pull forward. So that's something that I've always remembered. I do want to clarify one point, and that was a concern that was raised by Pete. Pete owns a Jodel and has no push stickers on his tailplane. And he was concerned that on one of the sequences I was showing, it looked as if I was pushing on the tailplane. Well, it's true. They are only held in place with four fairly tiny bolts. But my Jodel has a couple of fuselage handles. And if you look very closely, you'll see that I pull on these and I just guide by steering uh, with my hand on the leading edge of the tailplane. But having said that, thank you very much for sharing the concern. It always pays to look after each other. Before I go on to the next bit, I was just going to ask everybody a question. Um, I have bought from Screwfix uh, this trickle charger, bearing in mind the problems that we've been having with the battery. Um, and yeah, this week I haven't been able to do any flying whatsoever because the weather's been bad. Um, I'm not sure what next week's looking like. So um, this was £24 or something from, from Screwfix, as I say. And the object of the exercise is the fact that you simply plug it in and it's a sort of maintenance charger and it will just slowly trickle charge if it needs to. What I wasn't sure about, and I've never come across before, uh, maybe it's something that's fairly obvious but I just didn't know, they said um, in the paperwork that if you are charging a battery which is installed, um, it didn't actually mention an aircraft, but it did say that if your battery is installed, then the positive goes on to the positive of the battery. But what I was a bit surprised with is the fact that it said don't put the negative on the negative of the battery, but actually put it on one of the earthing points of the vehicle. Now I'd be interested to know in the comments below whether people have come across this before. So it's whether or not I should put that um, onto a, an earthing point. The other thing I do know that I hadn't been doing in the past was taking out from the top of the battery you've got a number of plugs for each of the cells but there is one plug which is a venting plug and they said that you need to remove that. But I'd be interested um, in anybody's comments if they've got an opinion or they know exactly what it's all about. Anyway, let's move on from there. Thank you. It would have been nice to have ended up with a, a, a film um, of flying. It's not going to happen. But what I will do is um, I'll talk just a little bit about this camera um, which was wobbling like mad just now but actually since I put that piece of velcro on the back when we did that flight above the clouds it was it was very good and it, it did hold its position. I had been pleased to come up with the idea of using the old iPad 2 RAM mount to hold a fourth GoPro this one on a swivel 
but the trouble is the arm was too long and it did tend to vibrate too much.
Yeah. No, this one. <laughs> nice, nice picture. If I'd have got a long, proper lens on a nice SLR camera, as you went past those trees and in front of the sun, oh, yeah. that would have made an absolutely brilliant shot. As it is, uh, I don't know, not on this camera.